Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Bradford series. Bradford is a hugely important city in West Yorkshire. A lot of it is unparished, but there are 20 of them here, so let's dive into one of them today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a brand new district here in West Yorkshire. For the very first time, I'm in Bradford. Now, this is gonna be a 20 episode series and every single one of these, of these places is absolutely massive. And this one is no exception. It's taken me a long time to get here this morning owing to problems on the M1, but I'm finally here. I'm about 20 minutes behind schedule. I reckon this is gonna take me about an hour to walk around the main village. There are a few other bits and bobs as well to catch while we're here. Welcome to Harden. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Our first parish of Bradford is Harden, which lies two miles west of Bingley. Harden gives its name to Harden Moor, a vast swathe of open moorland to the north of the village. Harden's history goes back to the Romans. There's evidence of a Roman settlement in the area dating from around 150 AD. There's a small section of Roman road on Harden Moor. Throughout the Roman and Saxon periods which followed, there was probably a more or less permanent settlement on the site of Harden, but little remains to be seen today. In the Doomsday Book, Harden was recorded under the name of Hattletone or Hattleton. Between 1960 and 1997, Harden's biggest employer was Ellison Circlips. They occupied one of at least three mills in Harden. The other two were both situated alongside Harden Beck, the main watercourse in the area. The modern village is well served. It has a post office, a convenience store, a garden centre and an independent butcher's. There's also a small park which hosts an annual gala during the summer. One of the most notable people to hail from the village is the celebrated cathedral organist, Alan Wicks, who was born in the village in 1923. There's lots to see and talk about in this one, so let's get Bradford off to a very good start. It's Harden people, let's go. Our route starts on Effingham Road. A lot of these are modern properties. In the 1960s, Harden would have looked very different. That was thanks to the factories of Ellison Circlips. The company relocated to Glusburn in 1997 and their factory was demolished to make way for housing. The factories were bounded to the south by this road, the B6429 Long Lane. Effingham Road was to the west and to the north were fields leading up to Harden Moor. Let's walk down Long Lane. Here's a bus stop. The buses which run through Harden are the 616, 619 and K4, connecting it to both Bradford and Keithley. Next is a bench on the corner of Castle Croft. This was placed here in 2021 by Harden Village Council and the Harden and District Women's Institute. I don't know for sure what this refers to, but it could be Ferrens Folly, sighted in the valley below. 
Okay, so this road is pretty much just a gentle slope all the way down into the centre of the village, lined with these terraced houses. There's quite a lot in the centre of this one. Let's go and check it all out. The next section sees us continue down Long Lane to its junction with Keithley Road. Here's a pub called the Golden Fleece. We'll see a second pub a bit later. Over the road is Harden Primary School. This has been in existence since 1877 and the school still uses some of the Victorian buildings to this day. On Keithley Road we encounter a building which looks like an old school. This is likely. Keep watching to find out why. It's also where we come across some water. Harden sits in a valley, and at the bottom of that valley is where all this water drains to, Harden Beck. The fact that water is so prominent here is one reason why Harden was able to sustain mills. Two of them used to stand alongside Harden Beck. At the junction of Keithley Road and Long Lane is the Yorkshire Treats Company. This has only been here since 2021. It's a coffee shop, cafe and cupcake business. Okay, now we're right in the centre of the village outside Harden's Church. We'll uh, go across to that in a moment and check it out. When we've done that, we'll head across to this phone box that we saw a couple of moments ago and see what's in that. I haven't explored that yet. And then from here, we're sort of heading that way, past the Congregational Church, which is this building on the corner. Until 1930, Harden was ecclesiastically part of the parish of Bingley. However, since 1865, an old school in Harden was licensed for church services. Could that have been the building we met earlier, I wonder? In the late 1890s, St Saviour's was built as a mission church on a site given by the local squire. Let's check out that phone box next, and this one is a very well-kept book exchange. For those new here, I love finding these. All of this can be found at a mini roundabout where Long Lane meets Wilsdon Road, the centre of the modern village. Overlooking the roundabout is the village's war memorial. Erected in 1920, this is a Tuscan column of sandstone standing on a hexagonal base. And that brings us to Snowdens, an independent local butcher's, which is right next to the village shop and post office. There's also a notice board here. Okay, so because this is the first time I've done one in Bradford, there'll be a lot of people watching this, I'm sure, who haven't seen me before. This is what I do when I visit a place. I find the parish notice board and put one of these cards on it. And there you go, that's hard and done. One down in Bradford and 19 to go. Moving down Wilsdon Road, we find one of the village's most recognisable buildings, the Harden Congregational Church, which was built in 1875. Just a few paces away is the former Wesleyan Methodist Church. This was built in 1853, but an original chapel in the village predated this by 40 years. Wilsdon Road then splits into two. The modern Wilsdon Road goes to the right, whilst to the left is Wilsdon Old Road. On the latter, we find the old rectory. After turning left at a small green, we're heading back north on Narrow Lane. We're on something called the Calder Air Link here. It's a 17 mile long national trail which links the St Ives estate to the Mary Townley Loop of the Pennine Way. At this point, it runs past another beck. I love the sound of rushing water. There's more of that to come. Next, we're heading into Harden Park, and these here are the park gates. Okay then, here we go into Harden Park. Now this should end, according to my map, as a little playground where there's a, a footpath which will take me back onto this road behind this wall over here. Then I've got to walk back the other way along this road towards the Cricket Club and then across the Cricket Club and up a massive hill. Wish me luck. Ah, 
Harden Park is the venue for the annual Harden Gala, which features a parade that processes down Long Lane past the school and the church. Exiting the park, we turn right and we head up Harden Road towards the Cricket Club. On the way, we pass something called the Ferron Stone. This looks like a gravestone and it's set into the wall on the northern side of the road. This marks the boundary of the St Ives estate. We'll touch a bit more on the Ferrons a little later. Next is Harden Cricket Club, which has been in existence since at least 1950. They play on a site known as Cuckoo's Nest at the foot of the St Ives estate. Over the road is a garden centre, Woodbank Nurseries. And Cuckoo's Nest is also the name used to describe the home ground of the local football club. Now, let's go up that hill. Okay, so we're halfway up the hill and uh, look at this. You know, I said earlier, I like the sound of rushing water. Look at these waterfalls. Magnificent. I love finding waterfalls. Right, let's keep going. It's a long way up here to the St. Ives Estate, but it'll be worth it when we get to the top. We're now within the St. Ives Estate, a 550-acre country park and former estate between Bingley and Harden, which is now owned by Bradford City Council. The estate is huge. Where I'm pointing to here on this map is where we are, and just look how big this area is in comparison. It used to be part of Harden Moor. There are stories of it having a connection with General Fairfax and the Civil War, but regrettably, little is known with any certainty. We do know, though, it has many listed structures, including the St Ives Mansion House, which was built in 1616. In 1635, the Ferrand family purchased St Ives. The most celebrated Ferrand family member was William Busfield Ferrand, a former MP. The estate features a granite obelisk, which commemorates his career. Down off the estate, we're back on Keithley Road, and just off it I found this. It's an old petrol pump sat at the entrance to Crowther Fold. And here we are back on Millbeck Drive, and that's taken me about an hour and 20 minutes. Not bad, considering some of the terrain I've been walking on. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, that's Harden Village, the main walk around. But of course, we're not done with this one yet. Oh no. I'm going to drive the car down now to a bridge on Harden's uh, parish boundary where it meets Wilsdon. Uh, and we'll finish off just there. So let's hop in the car, which is over there, and let's drive down to it. Just before we go down to the bridge, it would be remiss of me to not talk about Harden Moor, the expanse of moorland that lies to the north of the village. The moor has several springs and marshes, and in its central section it's drained by two streams, Deep Cliff Hole and Mid Grand Beck, which both flow through Harden Village. The moor has a varied history. It goes back to the Bronze Age, and this is evidenced by cairns, which date from as far back as 700 BC. A Roman road crosses Harden Moor, which originates in Manchester, and runs to what was the Roman encampment known as Olicana. Harden Moor was also used for military training during World War II. The St Ives estate has an old hut where the Home Guard used to meet. On the moor is Altar Rock, also known as Druid's Altar. The rock is mentioned in Benjamin Disraeli's novel Sybil. He visited the rock in 1844 while staying with William Ferrand.
So now we're at the bottom of the valley and this is Harden Beck, an overflow channel of glacial erosion which was carved out during the last ice age. Between Goitstock Waterfall further up the valley and here, this section of the Beck is locally referred to as the Hidden Valley. Here's the Malt Shovel Inn, or just the Malt if you will, which is technically in Wilsdon, but it makes sense to include it here because this was the place where travelling judges would pass sentences on criminals. Any who received the death penalty were hung on Harden Moor. Gruesome, but I know some of you love things like that. Of course, Harden Beck is where two of the village's former mills used to be. One of them still stands and is now the Valley Group, a printing works. And the bridge connecting the two sides of the Beck is one of Harden's listed buildings. Made of stone, it consists of two segmental arches. So obviously the bridge and the water underneath it is the parish boundary, but of course the village sign can't be in the water, which is why Wilsdon's village sign, which you'll see at the beginning of the Wilsdon episode by the way, is right there. But everything I've just shown you, most of it, is uh, on the Wilson side, including the Mott. And that's it for the parish of Harden. And now I'm going to head down into Wilson because that's going to be next week's episode. I'm going to put the camera on the dash to start with and drive through the northern section. It's very linear that part, so I can't really walk around that. And then head down into the main village itself. It's much bigger than Harden and will take me a bit longer. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed this one, so I'm probably going to enjoy Wilsdon just as much. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiots, and this has been the first parish of Bradford, Harden, and I'm out.